Thank you, Michael. Um, okay, so moving on to me. Um, on the block of the telly, not. That was a recent thing. Uh, I'm a shopkeeper. Uh, I left school at 16 with a Scottish certificate in colouring in maps. Geography to those of you that didn't understand what that was. Um, and that was the only, only qualification I left school with because I was thick. Not. But I was dyslexic, severely dyslexic. So it was very easy going to comprehensive school just to put you in, in the lowest stream of all the classes and just keep you quiet. So I spent a lot of my school life looking out the window, uh, dreaming. I was a daydreamer. Um, but also, because I was dyslexic, everything was a challenge. Peter mentioned earlier about some people find things really easy and they just get on with it and they achieve. For me, just the simplest task at school was a challenge. So I needed to find workarounds. I didn't understand what was going on. My brain understood I needed to find a solution, but I couldn't do it the way that everybody else was doing it. So in subjects that I really enjoyed, where I had good teachers that could engage me, I would find workarounds to achieve the final answer. And it would be going all over the place, but I'd get there. Slowly, I'd get there. And methodically, I'd get there. And because it was slow and methodic, it meant I had to work harder than everyone else. It meant I had to do more homework than everyone else. It meant I couldn't just turn up and not be prepared. It meant I had to be prepared and just to be average, as far as the system was concerned, I had to put in two or three times the effort that everybody else had to do. So, what's that got to do with my success? Um, lots, because it meant when I went out to the big wide world, I could look at a problem and I was already geared up to finding a solution. My mind always was already looking for ways of solving an issue. And it wouldn't be the most orthodox way of doing it, but I'd get there. I would always find a workaround. Secondly, we talked about hard work and there's no substitute Nobody just breezes through life, just making money and being successful. You've got to put in the hours, the miles, the effort. And the main thing I, I try and tell all my friends, family, kids, is do your homework. Why do you want to compete with somebody on a level playing field? And be exactly the same. Have the same chances of winning as the next guy. Well, you already know you're at a disadvantage. So you need to change the odds. You need to tilt the odds in your favour. Which means you need an advantage. Because otherwise the next guy is going to beat you. Now of course, if you go to a casino and stack the cards in your favour, what happens? They throw you out, beat you up? Even worse. Even worse. Even worse. In business, or in life, it's called doing your homework and being prepared. And it's what you're expected to do. Stack the cards in your favour. There's no shame in that. It's not illegal. It's exactly what you need to do in your life. You do not want to compete the same odds as everyone else. Because those of you who are statisticians here, is there a few statisticians? No. Okay. Nobody does numbers in Oxford. Good. That's probably the other thing I was good at, numbers. Um, you'll find that it averages out. So, do your homework. Prepare yourself. Make sure you've got the advantage. Because it just doesn't come. And for me, every time I'd go into a deal, or do I have to achieve something, I would work so hard. I would stack the cards in my favour to give me a chance of winning. And even then, sometimes you lose. Because that's a fact of life you'll make wrong decisions. It was said earlier, the person that says he never made a mistake, never made the wrong decision, is a person that has never made a decision, or is a bloody liar. So you will get things wrong, but make sure you stack the cards in your favour. Find out what you're good at. 
Why would you go and do something that you're average at? What's going to happen if you're average at something? You're going to deliver average output. Find the thing that you're good at because that gives you that advantage over the next guy, next girl. You're on this world for an incredibly short period of time. That's what I've learned. Um, it's like, it's not even a pinprick on a rhinoceros's ass, your lifespan on the world. It's that short. Don't waste it waiting to die. Find that thing you're good at. Find what your passion is. Don't go and do a job or do something you hate or do not enjoy for the money. That's miserable. That's not success. Well, wherever you reach in that, in, in that ladder, that's not success. Success is finding the things that you're passionate about, enjoying what you do. Those are the things that are going to make you exceptional. The, the last thing I, I really want to um, leave you with is money. Is, is, that, is that what we all think success is? We all think money is about its success? Is that what we all want to do? Leave university, get a great job, make loads of money? You're all bloody quiet, aren't you? Um, money. Is it about money? Did I start work just to make money? Yes, I did. I did. We were poor. We had nothing. Absolutely single parent family living in a council flat. So the thing that drove me, I needed money. I needed to be success. Success gave me money. And then one day I woke up and realised I had more bloody money than I needed. And I was still very young. So what was I going to do? Stay in bed? No. Do I need more money? No. Do I need success? Yes. I need the challenge. I'm doing something that I'm passionate about. I want to get out of bed. So the money becomes a byproduct. It's a scorecard. It was mentioned earlier. It's a scorecard. All it is, at the end of the year, you fill in this thing called a tax return. Well, some people do. Um, <laughs> we won't, won't mention them. But you fill in this thing called a tax return, and it shows how good you are, how successful you've been in making money. That's it. It's a, it's a scorecard. It's not, they, you, that's not the reason you will get out of bed. So find that passion. Find the thing that makes you jump out of bed in the morning and you can't wait to go and do it and enjoy your lives. Thank you very much.